in here. Yeah, you, can, you can look at it. Sorry. I'm, I probably won't make it much juice anymore. I, yeah, I'll, I'll make some grape juice now. Careful how you get down now. The wheat grass. Yeah, we'll do wheat grass and, and I'll yeah. do some grapes. Because I want to show you the difference between the two holes. Okay, John. Now you rinse this under a faucet. Let the faucet spray. And you never use a cleanser on this. You never use a soap. You never use anything. I will teach you next week how this comes off, this little screen, this little, little uh, buffer zone here, how it comes off of your juicer and how to reinsert it. Because it's very important that eventually this comes off. It's, it doesn't come off initially. It comes off later after you use it for a couple of months. And I'll explain all of it, how to reassemble it to you. Then the motors here, you just wipe it clean. See, there's four little feet, four little platforms. Line the spout where it says juice man. Well, you'll learn all this next week anyway. And then take the screen and put it on. And then take the blades and put it on. And with, with the blades, with the water running on it, just do like that. And then this runs under it. After you take it apart, if you're a slow poke, two minutes, two and a half minutes to clean. If you get the system down pretty fast, minute, minute and a half to clean. It's rinse, just like zap, 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 it's done. But you see how fine that screen is? I'll put it on. Oh, yes, John. Okay. Now I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to do a little grape juice for you good. I'm going to do a little grape, grape juice for you, and then I'm going to do... Uh, uh, I'm going to do the wheatgrass. And uh, every one of the people that get the juicer, every juicer that I that I bring in for you, and any of you that are buying juicers out there now, I'm going to get on the phone to my New York office way out in Long Island. I'm going to have a blue label, UPS, spend the money, so I have a shipment of juicers coming Wednesday, because it takes two days. I can't afford one-day service. So what they fly out on Monday, We'll have Wednesday, but they fly Tuesday, we'll have Thursday, but they fly, because we can only send like maybe 12 at a time. We'll send 12 to my, I've opened up a little office over here, and we'll send 12, we'll get 24 in a day. We can get them in one, in two days. So I'll have them all physically for you right here next Sunday with your name on each one, and we'll go through every single facet of the juicer. Every one of you will open up at the same time, put your juicer together piece by piece. I'll give you all kinds of little, little techniques on how to operate this. But every juicer that I have, I mark. Because the basket could fit one way or the other way. All right. All right, Johnny. He's still, he's usually, more ener he's usually more energetic than this. He's still suffering from jet lag. But he's a raw foodist, except Linda has given him a little cheese lately. He's got a little runny nose. We're going to get that out of his diet. He's really neat. Very, very sharp little guy. But he's never had cow's milk, he's never had anything, he's never had any animal product. She did give him a little bit of rentless cheese. You know what rentless cheese is, don't you? Um, it's the only cheese you should buy. Go to the health store, they carry it. Rentless cheese is cheese that doesn't have the guts of a sheep in it to coagulate it and keep it from breaking down. Jay, what do you think about the problem? Well, it's kind of gaming, kind of a little bit hard to handle for most people, but it's the only. It's it's compatible, pretty compatible to human milk. Cow's milk is taboo. And a lot of people say, well, where do you get your calcium from? One large glass of carrot juice has more usable calcium than two and a half glasses of cow's milk. It doesn't give you all that mucus and all that congestion and everything else, you see? Mm -hmm. In fact, when you drink, a lot of people say, well, I'm drinking milk because I have an ulcer. Well, that mucus of that milk lines the ulcer, it coats mm -hmm. it, and then when that wears off, it's just like this. It's just like you have a cut on your hand, right? and you form a coagulation of blood. And you have a scab form as the healing process. It's just like taking a new form scab and just yanking it right off. So once that milk evaporates from the intestinal lining or wherever, or the duodenum, wherever the ulcer may be, it's just like taking a scab right off and leave that ulcer even more vulnerable. You'll never heal it that way. On TV you said you munch an oven sometimes. Yeah, I do. I have a, I do a, I'm, I'm kind of different. I'll eat. When I travel, I'll take things if I need if I need bulk, like sun-dried apricots that don't have any sulfur dioxide, which damages your kidneys permanently. Uh, my uh, apricots are usually ugly looking, <laughs> kind of all brown and withered and shriveled up. You've had those kind, haven't you? And those are the best kind. Then I'll do a few things like almonds. Not that Edgar Casey said if you eat two almonds a day, you may have cancer. Could be true. But I eat it because it's a very good protein. Yeah, I think that's vitamin E. Pardon? I think almonds have vitamin E. 
Well, oh yeah, all all seeds and nuts have vitamin E. Our heart vitamin, our energy vitamin. Do you consider walnuts as one of the best vitamins? Absolutely. The can I say something to all of you, especially my youngsters? Don't eat peanuts. Why? <laughs> peanuts aren't a nut. They are a legume. They're a bean. They grow under the ground on the earth on a vine. And they really don't call them peanuts. See, that's Madison Avenue. That's advertising brainwashing you to make it sound like it is a nut. Down in Jimmy Carter's country, they don't goobers. Goobers and goober peas. They're almost impossible to digest. Great protein, but hard fat. And you know something? Do you remember when I told you, that you, you remember earlier when I talked about white flour real early? And I told you about the report that Dr. Pottinger had with cats, the cancer and the heart disease. When researchers use guinea pigs or mice or cats or dogs to have a valid research about cancer of the lungs from cigarette smoke, cancer of the, uh, the pancreas, cancer of the liver, cancer of the bone, osteomyelitis. Whenever they do a testing like that, don't forget these animals don't have cancer. As a rule, they don't have cancer. Now, if you take a, an animal, like say a guinea pig, and you're working on it to find out if that is a real vaccine or will it treat cancer of a certain thing, how are you going to show validity if that animal doesn't have cancer? First of all, you have to create cancer in that animal, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what do they do? They take the fungus of a peanut called aflatoxin and they inject it in any local area, into the bone, into the lungs, into the liver, to incubate and induce cancer in the animal. Now they can start working on vaccines or drugs or medications or whatever to rid that animal of that particular cancer and that particular reason. But first of all, they have to start in an area that they're working on. And what do they do? They use, like I said, the aflatoxin, which is the fungus of a peanut. Now, if you're going to buy peanut butter, the best